Today we're talking Sega on GameCube. Let's see how we get on. Hello and welcome to the show. Today we're talking about Sega on GameCube and more precisely, all the UK releases for the GameCube that were released by Sega or developed by Sega. So we've got them all here. Just a little bit of a caveat though, I have been informed since I put this collection together that F-Zero, one of the games that Sega released for the GameCube, has actually been released on the um, GameCube player's choice range. So in theory, I haven't finished it yet. There's still one more variant to get, but for all intents and purposes, we're done. But just before we get into all of that, because there's a cracking load of games here and we'll see lots of game footage and we'll make sure that we go through them all one by one. Um, just wanted to say as well, I'm not going to go through all the Sonic Team games, which are here. Uh, the reason being is I am planning a rather large Sonic Team during the sixth generation of games consoles video, which will hopefully be out in the next couple of months. But so we'll, we'll go through the games and just show the packaging and stuff. I'm not going to go into any detail about those games because hopefully there'll be a, a very big video coming soon. Mm -hmm. but just before we get into all of that, um, I have some great news and actually something that, um, that makes me feel really good, actually. Um, I was invited to be an admin on one of the Facebook groups, which is Galaxy Sega. So thanks to all the admins for inviting me and... Uh, for all the support and all the well wishing, it's been really good. The um, reason why that's special to me is I'm, I'm, I'm admin on quite a few groups um, anyway. But the reason why this one's particularly special uh, is because it was the very first Facebook group I joined when I sort of approached the, the Facebook retro scene, if you like. So um, it's one I've always been really fond of and um, it's quite a proud moment and uh, I'm really happy about that. So hopefully you can make a good job of it like I have in, in the other groups. And um, just wanted to put that out there, that um, some good news for me. Now, looking at all these GameCube games, um, and my last video about uh, my Xbox Sega games, I did have um, someone ask me, um, through just having a brief chat, is what is all the, where is this going? Where are all these mini sets going? So, it might just help me to explain a little bit. I kind of, because my Sonic Team uh, collection is really getting towards the end now and I'm really really running out of things to buy for it um, I decided to look at well what else can I start collecting because I do love collecting video games love playing games love having new experiences and I like seeing what's out there and obviously a massive Sega fan and it just so happened that by a certain set of circumstances I have got really really close to having a full Dreamcast set uh, a UK PAL Dreamcast set um, never really had any intentions to set out to collect it. Um, a couple of raffle wins and just having the chance to buy a really large bundle got me really, really close to the set. So I decided I'd start going for it. In the meantime, I realised that I had pretty much all the Xbox games um, that were released by Sega and most of the GameCube ones as well and, and a fair few PS2 ones. And I was just thinking, I do talk about the six generations of consoles a lot and it's probably the one that I have the most memories in terms of being an adult for. Um, it was my formative years that like sort of came through and, and it was Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 and, and Xbox and stuff as I was sort of becoming an adult. So it was kind of the first generation where I kind of had my own money where I could actually do a job and go out and just buy a game without having to wait to save uh, paper and money or pocket money or, or birthdays and all that sort of stuff. So that's why for me it's why I have the biggest collection for. I certainly have more um, consoles and accessories from the sixth generation than I do for any other era. Uh, closely followed by 16-bit obviously because of all the Mega Drive gear. But getting a little bit off topic here. So what I decided to do was let's see how many games were released in the UK by Sega for the six generations of console. So that's Dreamcast, PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. And when I started looking at it, I actually realized that actually I'm really close to having all of those. And as it stands now, having got all of the Xbox ones and, and all the GameCube ones, um, I need about another 20-odd PlayStation 2 ones. And they're in one of these drawers here, slowly building up 
that collection and Dreamcast I think I'm down to I think it's 35 it's it's, it's, it's in the mid 30s anyway so I'm getting on the home stretch I've got under 60 games to get to have all of the Sega games released um, during a whole generation in the UK and because I'm the I'm the one these people that likes going for full sets like I'm I'm inadvertently started doing the Dreamcast one but I feel a bit guilty about it because I've got all these games in this Dreamcast shelf where I just know I'm never going to play them like you know these really rubbish sort of well not rubbish but to me they're rubbish like racing games and things like that which I know I'm not going to enjoy um, and you know old football games which weren't even very good at the time let alone playing them now and things like um, uh, you know just lots of different things there that I probably wouldn't get into like Resident Evil like I don't really like Resident Evil so to have to buy all these games for a Dreamcast set really grinds me because I don't I've always been the kind of collector that would buy things I want to play like, I always collect my fantasy games so like Lord of the Rings, Gauntlet, games like that, I'll always pick up for any system because I like those kind of games, like action games based in, you know, fantasy setting. Um, platformers, I like all platformers, so if I saw a platformer, I'd always pick those up again for any system. Um, and uh, puzzle games as well, so like Pio Pio, Tetris, all that kind of stuff um, I really, really like, so I'll always pick those sorts of games up. So that's why I thought... I'll just do the Dreamcast set, see how it's settled, because I'm so close now, it'll be silly not to finish it. Um, but I thought I might as well do, do the whole generation of Sega stuff in the UK, so I'm getting really close. So that's just a little bit of a, uh, an explanation as to where these mini sets are coming from. Um, so yes, Xbox done, and there's a nice video on that if you want to go back and see that on my channel. We're going to do GameCube now, and hopefully you enjoy this, and we've got lots of game footage. And then hopefully in the near future, PS2, and then, because um, I think I'll do that pretty quick, because it's 20 odd games, lots of them are like two, three quid. I mean, I, I could just troll eBay now and probably pick them all up for like 30, 40 quid. And there's only about two, um, two games left out of that when I actually had a quick look through that actually cost any significant money. One, one is quite an expensive one, and another one's about 20, 30 pounds. So, um, yeah, but the rest of the PS2 will be no problem. So I'm hopefully knocking that one out of the water hopefully in the next month or so um, but we'll have to see i don't want to rush and overspend anything but let's get on to gamecube then so why yeah, the gamecube for me is actually my favorite nintendo console i uh, bought it i think the day it came out or very very soon after that um i was obviously devastated that the dreamcast had you know not done as well as it needed to do and, and was kind of finished by the time that the gamecube came out but i really fell in love with the gamecube i have um, an immense gamecube collection um maybe not so much in terms of games well i have i have a fair few but certainly accessories i have nearly every single accessory that was released for it or at least in the uk and i've got a few from overseas i'm, I'm trying to wrap up that little thing and um, so I'll, there'll be a picture of that hopefully popping up on this video so you can have a look but i really like the gamecube i, I don't I don't think it gets the love it deserves. I really enjoyed the Game Boy player on it. I used to play a lot of my Game Boy Advance games, especially the Sonic ones, because you could then have them on the big screen and it come out in lovely 60 hertz as well, which was really great at the time. And I just felt that it was really overshadowed as the original Xbox was by, by the PS2. I mean, the PS2 just ran away with that generation and go well, quite rightly, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here like some stroppy teenager bemoaning Sony for, for ruining everything. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I just don't think that people, and the amount of people I speak to at game shows and, um, uh, you know, uh, events and things where they say, oh, I've never really played a GameCube. I find that astonishing. The amount of people that haven't played a GameCube or a Dreamcast um, and have only just known PS2 and maybe a bit of Xbox because the Xbox was quite popular in, in the UK because there's a lot of good sports games and racing games on it. But I do find it absolutely astonishing the, the amount of people that haven't experienced these. And... I'm just going for a, a, a mini set here, just the Sega ones. And we've got some absolutely really amazing games here. And that's just from one, one little company. So I suppose it's important to recognize that I always have to with these videos that Sega had gone from a first party publisher with their own systems and had to really quickly form into a third party publisher like EA or Capcom and, and all the rest of it. And they did that quite gracefully um, under, you know, considering the circumstances they are in where, where they, they could have gone bust really. But Sega managed to sort it all out and start releasing some cracking games so i'm going to go through them in alphabetical order um and then we'll do all the sonic ones just at the end because i'm not going to go into too much detail about those but we'll make a start then so the first one we have is 18 wheeler now i really like this game on the dreamcast 
on the GameCube it plays very very similar but I just think the way it controls on this one isn't quite as good as the Dreamcast but I'm not going to go into too much detail about this game because I, I it's, it's quite it was quite a popular one at the time and um, yeah most people have played it etc um, and I, I'm sure that you know there's plenty of videos out there about it but it's a good, it does play okay I reckon it's a cheap one on GameCube uh, I do recommend it uh, and here's the first game which would be a little bit more interesting a Sega one called Beach Spikers now this is one of these Sega ones where they're clearly just trying to corner a market and you'll see from the footage coming up that uh, it's basically just beach volleyball it I'm not exactly sure what the engine is, but it's AM2, who um, are, uh, you know, a, a very famous Sega uh, um, arcade team. And I, th playing this game, it almost feels like it's a bit like Virtual Striker um, and, and games of that that use that kind of game engine. But I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Is it any good? It controls OK. I was playing it. I'd never played it before I got it for this collection. It was one of the last ones that I needed to get. Um, so that was great, and it's okay. I, 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 if you like, if you like this kind of game and you enjoy Sega sports games, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's an amazing game. Um, I, I played it for about half an hour, and I thought, yeah, I've kind of had enough of this. Uh, I'll probably go back to it though. It was quite fun. It was hard, which was what I liked. I got beaten by the computer twice before I before I actually won a match. So I like that about it that it was uh, difficult. Um, but it's certainly not a rubbish game. The graphics are good and it controls well. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of scantily clad ladies um, from the footage there. But yeah, overall, not a bad one. I'm glad I got it and um, certainly will be giving it another bash later on. Now, another game I'm not going to spend too much time on because it's quite a popular one and it's been done to death. It's Crazy Taxi. It's okay on the GameCube. It is, I think it plays a lot better on the Dreamcast. I'm not too sure with some, with, it was strange with some of these ports like things like 18 wheeler and, and these ports of Dreamcast games to the GameCube they worked really well on Xbox but when they then got ported to GameCube not all of them work so well. I don't know if that's just something to do with the the architecture of the system or say you're just rushing to get their biggest properties out not sure but I'd say if you play this it's, it's, it's a fine to play there's absolutely no problems with it but um for some reason, it's just that ever so slightly bit better on the Dreamcast. Maybe it's a nostalgia thing where it is such a Dreamcast game that if you're playing on a different system, it doesn't doesn't quite doesn't quite feel the same. But yeah, worth picking up again. It's a really cheap one. It's like a couple of pounds. And um, now we move on to one of the more obscure games we have released by Sega on the GameCube, and that is F Zero X uh, GX, not F Zero X. That's uh, the N64 one. F Zero GX. I'm um, not sure what the GX stands for. I'm sure I could should have found out before this video. But interesting fact. Now, obviously, people are thinking, wait, hold on a minute. Why is Sega releasing one of Nintendo's best properties or well-known properties on Nintendo's system? Well, it's actually not just Sega. It's Sega, Namco, and Nintendo. They all teamed up to make a, a, an arcade system, which... Um, is really fun and they had this game came up first which was the F-Zero GX game or let me just get that right I, don't, I think it's called something slightly different in the arcade but we'll find out here and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this when I when I bring this up uh, AX, sorry it was called F-Zero AX in the arcade I'm not sure if this is going to come out too well but I'll, I'll, I'll certainly try to keep it still but basically what you could do was like you could with the Dreamcast and some of their games, you could take your memory card of F-Zero and bring it to the arcade and put it in the arcade version of this game and load up your character. So if you'd made up a funky, because you can customise all the vehicles, so if you'd made up a funky Captain Falcon or whatever, you could play with that in the arcade. Now, the actual game is brilliant. I, I'm a big F-Zero fan. Like if, if someone said to me, Faith, Sega doesn't exist, you've only got Nintendo to go for. I'm just playing Donkey Kong and F-Zero, I'm probably not playing much else. And this is one of my favourite arcade races. On the SNES, I absolutely love it, I play it a lot. It's probably that and Killer Instinct is the two SNES games I play the most. Um, and this, uh, the N64 one was decent enough, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't, it wasn't excellent. But this one, I think, is, is the best one that I've played. Um, it's really fast. You'll see from the footage that, that I'm showing that it, it really gives a real sense of speed. 
and it's really challenging. You put it on the easy mode, it's okay, you get through it, you get going. You start playing this in the more difficulty set, uh, higher difficulty settings, and oh my God, does it become an absolute nightmare to try and complete. I spend a lot of time with this game, and I still struggle with it today. And I'm, I've, I've had this game, you know, since 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 since, since the you know the time it came out, and it's it's an absolute barnstormer of a game. And I'm so glad Sega were involved with it. Um, so yeah, it was a, a mashup between Sega, Nintendo, and 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 Namco bringing out an arcade system together. And then they decided just to release a, a, a slightly lower res version, if you like, on, on the GameCube. And it's an absolute corker, one of the best games on the system. So I'm glad I got that. It controls excellently, there's so many options, there's loads of cars, the, the tracks are just phenomenal, and the sound and everything, absolutely amazing. So definitely check that out if you've got a GameCube. Moving on to the next game is one I was a little bit disappointed in. Again, it's one of the games that I didn't have when I decided to go for the set. So I had to pick up fairly recently and I managed to get a really good deal off of someone on, um, uh, on, on eBay for it. And I had a little bit of, a, bit of a thing with them to get a couple of their games. And it's called Samurai Jack. Now it's based on a Cartoon Network cartoon, which I watched a little bit off before making this video and it was quite fun. It was quite a good little cartoon. Um, I'm not a massive animation fan but I can see that this was a very well made animation. It had a really distinctive uh, cell shaded, almost cell shaded kind of style about it and you'll see from the footage that that really comes through in the game. It's got a, it's got an almost kind of um, uh, Spartan, if you like, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, it's, 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 it's really bare boned. Like the cartoon is really bare boned. There's not much detail in and around the scenery or on the char um, character's um, uh, style or anything. And I'm not sure if that's what the game is meant to be like, or whether or not they were just a bit lazy and didn't bother filling in the, the levels with too much detail. Um, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they were just trying to recreate the the almost like sort of bland, simple nature of the cartoon with the graphics on this game. Because I found the worlds when I was, I played it, I, I must be honest, I've only played it for about half an hour. And I got fairly far in it. You know, didn't, didn't have any troubles getting through the levels. Um, it was just a basic action platformer. Um, the moves are really basic. There's not really much depth to it. It's pretty cool using the bow and arrow to kill some enemies. Uh, not much variety with the enemies or the stages. It, it seemed very samey. Run to an area, kill all the enemies, find the key, open the door, do the same again in the next area. There's a little bit of a story, save the world kind of thing. I'm sure that's something relevant to the cartoon, but, but I'm not, not 100%. Overall, I wouldn't say it was an amazing game. It's not terrible, but unless you're like a real diehard fan of the of the series, you probably the average gamer probably won't get much out of this. It's it's very much of its time. Um, the, the graphics are really bland, as I've mentioned. The music, I can't even remember the music at all. It was, it was pretty much a non-event. And it's just, the moves are all the same. There's a little bit of combos, a little bit extra stuff you can do, but not really. So a bit disappointed with this one, because it does look really good, um, you know, looking at the back and, and looking at the videos and stuff. But overall it's just a really standard third person third person action game that um, i wanted more from it because watching a couple of episodes of the cartoon is actually something i might might watch a bit more of but um but yeah I, I i'd skip over that one. Oh, now we get on to something brilliant now i'm not going to go into too much detail on these games because i will just talk forever on them because there are massive massive uh i'm a massive fan of the series i'm going to do them all in one go That is Super Monkey Ball, yeah. So this was the game was originally released on the GameCube before being released as a double pack for the PlayStation Two and the and the game um, and the Xbox. So they released both of these together, or um, or a big match um, mash up of these two for Super Monkey Ball Deluxe for the other two consoles. But these are the originals on the GameCube, and they play best on GameCube. Um, or do they? I mean, the Xbox one's really good as well. But something about these on the GameCube, it just suits the GameCube style. It's got that real cartoony, um, 
it's just nonsense really it's got that real sega style but i'm not going to talk too much about the first two because most people would have sort of played that and, and will, be, will be very familiar with it i'm going to talk about this one now someone helped me acquire this so a real real big shout out um and really happy to have this someone actually uh, someone that had let me start again get your words out faith so this was the very last game I needed to acquire. I'd never played this version of Monkey Ball for some reason. And I'd had all these other games and I was like, I'm ready. I just needed this last one. And I was looking on CEX and it just, it was a, it was an all right price, but I didn't want to take the risk of not getting it with a manual and it being a bit battered because it is for a, for a collection, not just to play. And I was asking on the groups, has anyone got this last one just to kill off this mini set? And a couple of people like, oh, I might have it, might not look. Two people got confused with the other monkey balls, um, which which was fine because it happens. Um, and then someone popped up and said, I've, I've got this. Do you want it? And I said, oh, yes, please. How much? And they said nothing. And they just said, um, you know, you, you can have it for free. So big shout out to Dean Rude for that. Dean, you're an absolute superstar. I'm absolutely blown away all the time by how amazing this community is and you know, Dean, I think Dean got it from CEX actually and then sent it on to me. Um, and it's a really nice copy, uh, absolutely no problems with it. I just need to find one of the little GameCube um, uh, information sheets, but I've got a few of those in other games somewhere and then that will finish that off lovely. So Dean, absolute superstar. You know, it just shows how great this community is that people are pulling together to try and get this set over the line for me and, and really, really pull the stops out. So really happy with that. Now this actual game itself, I was absolutely devastated by how not good it was <laughs> that's not the right word that's a silly word come on faith but i just this didn't what this wasn't monkey ball it's it, it's trying to be a bit like a um an open world platformer game it still has monkey ball elements like you still have the the, the really quick levels and the little puzzles to get through and all the bits and pieces but it has this kind of story angle now where you're trying to like again it's a save the world type thing for all the for all the monkey ball people and um, it's got characters and you've got to talk to the characters and you've got to move around this open like open map world um, like you would with like a Super Mario or Banjo-Kazooie type thing. It, it's really going along those lines and just having to traverse this world as a monkey ball character is really strange because you can't jump obviously because you're in a monkey ball ball and you can't you control it exactly like a monkey ball ball and it's really hard to traverse around this map to get to the level it's not impossible but it was just a bit weird um, and then you get to the actual levels and there's always the mini levels again and you smash all the mini levels and get onto the next bit and open up a bit more of the world and all that sort of stuff i played it for about about an hour i'm gonna have to complete it because i do love the series but it was just i was just disappointed and i don't think it really works for a monkey ball game i think they just needed to stick to what they knew and just make bigger and bolder mini levels and just like another load of them just do a super monkey ball 3 would have been fine but i do you know what though good on sega for trying something different because one of the things they they have always been a bit guilty of in the past is never really doing things differently and they were trying during this generation to adapt things and try new things they're trying lots of things with sonic for example yeah a lot of it didn't work but they were trying things and i think this is a i think just because the other two games were so good and so amazing and so playable and just amazing multiplayer and just just amazing arcade action so then have to sort of be reduced to having to navigate around this strange little world and having to just collect little bananas here and there and then talking to people and it really slowed everything down and you just want that quick arcade action it's just trying to bring too much into it and uh, i can see why they never they never really um, approach this style again but glad to have it in the collection because it's a super monkey ball game and I am going to complete it. I'm going to put myself through it. But moving on, um, I'm not going to talk too much about these next games because, you know, um, it's, it's three sports games. So Sega um, didn't really release a lot of sports games um, on the GameCube for some reason. They only did 2003 versions of their hockey, um, American football and NBA. So um they're okay they play a lot better on the xbox and they really went to town with the xbox version the, the graphics on this one are a bit more squashed and a bit weirder um they really use the power of the xbox so 
don't worry about these games on, on a GameCube. I've just obviously got them for the Sega collection. That that buy them on an Xbox or PS2. That they they they're, they're they're cheaper and and they're better or, or well play, play the same. But it's just there's not much about those games that 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 would really make me think. If it was like 2005, now the hockey game 2005 on the Xbox Sega one. That's an amazing hockey game. But we don't have it on GameCube. So sadly, um, Sega obviously realised these wasn't selling, and because these were quite expensive as well for for you know your basic sports games, they were like five six pounds each and stuff. So a um, bit rarer, and obviously it's not the kind of market. I don't think GameCube is the right place for Sega like realistic sports, arcadey sports games. So we we'll move on from that. Oh, here we go. One of my favourites. I love it, and everyone's gonna be like, oh, for goodness sake, Faith. Sega Soccer Slam. I need to get a new case for this one, which I will sort out at some point. But I love a bit of Sega Soccer Slam. I talked about this um, at quite some length on the Xbox one, so I won't go into so much detail now. But if you're a Sega fan and you love your kind of arcade, trippy, colourful sports games, you've got to check this out. It's got everything about it that you'd want from a Sega game. I absolutely love it. I play it more than I should, considering it's not a very good computer game. But if, if you're a fan of this kind of thing and you and you you love that Sega attitude and that big loud music and that big colourful bright graphics, you'll get on with this really well. And it's so simple to play and it's just one more go, one more go. Um, if you can get to that multiplayer, uh, with, with, well, with another person, absolutely brilliant. So definitely check this out um, if you're a Sega fan. But we won't go into too much detail because we've got a big one to talk about now. So this next one was a game that was first released on the dreamcast to critical acclaim um it's one of the dreamcast's best games it's definitely one of the best games of the sixth generation um it's probably not as well known among non-sega fans but i still think they would have at least heard the name because it was a big game at the time and it is i mean taking off my sega hat it is an amazing computer game and anyone that's a fan of this type of game um, when they start playing it will realise how good it is and will understand why it's good. The Mighty Skies of Arcadia. Wow, for some reason on the GameCube it's called Legends. <coughs> now I've had this on the Dreamcast for a long time um, and I've played it a lot and it's great. It's uh, one of the Dreamcast's best games. If you like your uh, Japanese RPGs, it's it's one of the better ones. I'm not sure why it's called Legends on the GameCube yet. I've only played this briefly to make the footage that, that, that we'll see in this video. I haven't seen anything different yet. And I have a bit of a criticism about this game. Now, on playing this game on the Dreamcast, it is absolutely beautiful. I play it on my CRT and it's big and bold and I love it and it's really nice sort of sharp pixels and polygons and stuff going on but for some reason I was playing this on it might just be the fact that for, for, and I don't even know why I was doing this but I was playing this on on, on an LCD rather than an, a CRT because just to get the footage together for the video and I didn't play it for very long played it for about 40 minutes and because I played the game for a couple of times I, I didn't feel the need to, to play it for, for any length of time because I, I, I I know I know about it. It controls the same, it's the same menus, all of that stuff's the same, the story, the, the cutscenes. But for some reason it just didn't look that good on a GameCube. I'm gonna revisit and plug my GameCube properly into my into my like, RGB CRT and see if that makes a difference. But for some reason I just felt this looked a bit washed out. The colours weren't as vibrant as they are on the Dreamcast version. It might have been me just not setting it up properly or, or playing it on the wrong screen, but I don't think so, because I've noticed this with some of these ports. Again, we're talking about we had this with 18-wheeler and Crazy Taxi. Some of these Dreamcast ports that come out over to GameCube, for some reason, they're, they're, just, they're just not quite the same when you've got this more, a slightly, well, a, a very similar power machine. Um, why it doesn't come out as good? And I just wonder if it's something to do with the architecture and Sega were just rushing to get their properties out on the GameCube. It'd be interesting to find out you know, if anyone you know has any information about why some of these games just don't seem to come out as well on the GameCube even though the, the hardware is incredibly similar. Um, but overall just forgetting all, all that technical stuff. What a game this is. GameCube, Dreamcast, whatever. 
this is one of the best RPGs. I, I'm not a huge Japanese RPG fan. I prefer Western RPGs on the PC, like Baldur's Gate and Morrowind and, 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 and that kind of stuff. Um, so, I, I, you know, things like Final Fantasy, and I, I've, I've played them and I'll sit through them and they're great games, but I don't rush to them to get to them. Like Final Fantasy VII, I, you know, I played that at the time because my friend had it and it was enjoyable and I loved it and all that. Um, and same with this one, I ended up getting it on the Dreamcast, played it through, thought it was great, but um, this is one of the better ones that I've ever played. And if you are a Japanese RPG fan and you've never played this, um, you are really missing out. The, it's quite detailed in terms of the weapons and equipment and things. Um, there's some absolutely amazing special moves and you'll see one in the footage and it absolutely um, looks beautiful to play. The combat itself is slightly basic, but it's, but it's what you'd expect um, from Japanese RPGs at the time. It's nothing, nothing complicated about, about the, 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 the battle system, very much reminiscent of, of your Final Fantasy and those kind of games. Um, but it's quite in-depth, and when you get further on and you start picking up the characters and you've got to convince them to join your team and the story can play out in different ways, it's got all that kind of stuff going on, so there's multiple ways to complete it. And the best bit about it, and the best thing about this game for me was you get to fly the ship around. So when you're on the world map, before you go into one of the towns or the villages or whatever, you get to fly this sky ship around. It's like a big pirate ship that flies around in the sky. And it's amazing and it's brilliant. And if you ever get to play this on the Dreamcast, you can actually use the, the, the steering wheel, that you know, like racing steering wheel, to fly the ship around and it's really cool. You feel like you're actual captain flying around. I don't know if you can do that on the GameCube one because I don't have a, a racing wheel for GameCube. GameCube's not really known for its racing games, so not sure. But anyway, if you haven't played this and you're a fan of RPGs, this really is one to check out. Um, again, I, this is one of the ones I had to get more recently and it's, it was a bit, ex it's a bit of an expensive one, but it's, it's, it's worth, every, worth every penny. So really happy. Skies of Arcadia, amazing. Now, the last few games I'm going to rattle through pretty quick because um, some of these games we've already seen. So I'm thinking of this one I spoke uh, fairly lengthy about on the Xbox video. It's a third person action game. You control um, you know, Spartan Warrior and you got a, it's a hack and slash basically. You've got some combos and stuff and you've got, a, you've got a, like, some missions on the levels but it's not really missions. Really you just hack and slash in till, till the cows come home. It's a decent game. It's got a real Sega style to it. If you're a fan of just hack and slash and button bashing type type um, action and, and you like sort of Sega style, Sega graphics and music, it's a great game. Um, it's nothing special, um, but it certainly hits a market and it's, it's very, very similar to the Xbox version. So I'm not gonna go into that one too much, but uh, worth picking up if you like that kind of game. This is a wonderful football game. I, I do like football. I'm a, I'm a bit of a football fan. And this one, Virtual Striker 3, version 2002. So it's again, another one of these Dreamcast ports. I think it's a Dreamcast port. Where's the one on the Dreamcast? Sorry. Yeah, Virtual Striker 2. Oh no, so it's a different one. Virtual Striker 3. So it's a different game. Yeah, it, it is slightly different. Um, I like this game. I, I, I'm not very good at it. I should be better at it. I remember playing it in the arcade and never beat the computer once. I have since beat the computer now playing it on the game. If I put more time into it, I know I'd get good at it. It is just a case of getting used to the, the way the shots go and the way the pass is going. But it's, it's a bit like a 3D version of Sensible Soccer. It's very much arcade rather than realism. Like if you're really into your football realism, like your FIFAs and your pros and stuff, just ignore this. But if you, a bit like the Sega Soccer Slam, if you like something a bit more arcadey, but it's a bit of a mixture. So like if, if Sega Soccer Slam is your ultimate arcade Sega football game and FIFA is your ultimate realism or pro or whatever, your ultimate realism, this is the kind of the in-between because it's real football with 11 players on the pitch. You've got fails and free kicks and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's got an arcade feel to it. Like it's not realistic with the passing or it's not realistic with the movement of the players or the tackling or anything. It is just about how s your hand-eye coordination, how quickly you can move the ball forward to put it in the back of the net. And it's really hard to score. 
the keepers are super on this. You know, they are all like, you know, Gigi Buffon, you know, the Wonder Years. Um, but really worth a play. I've um, got some footage of it and it's, it's, it's really fun. Uh, totally recommend it. I, I, if, you're a, if you're a football fan and you like arcade games, get this. Um, it's very similar on the Dreamcast, but I'd say this one's probably a lot more accessible because um, it's probably easier to find and it's a slightly updated one. Um, but I really like it. Um, it's got lots of different teams in it. It's just international. There's nothing... Um, there's not like leagues and all that, but you've got a bit of a weird career mode thing where you're like a very basic manager mode part as well, which I haven't really spent much time with, but I think if I did, I'd probably learn the game a lot better and we'll get better at it. But I like this and I, I play it once in a while and it's just a fun to have a few matches on and try and win the World Cup or whatever. Um, we get on to now Worms 3D. It was just distributed by Sega. It's not a Sega game. Um, I'm not a fan of these Worms 3D games. I said it in the Xbox video, Hogs of War on the PlayStation, if you want this sort of thing. The, uh, it's just slow and it doesn't work that well and the weapons are boring. But I think a lot of people would have seen it. And this one's like a, I think this copy is like almost new. I think I got it off Music Magpie, one of those kind of places. And I think it's like new because it just looks absolutely minty. And you know, you know, when you just get a game for it, it costs you like a couple of pounds and you're like, wow, you know, I would have paid a fiver for that, not just two pounds. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it actually is brand new. Because the disc looks like it hasn't, and, and it's like a. Um, I saw this on um, Zoe Kirk Robinson's videos recently, where she's talking about her um, PlayStation Two collection, and I know what she means when the boxes don't open up all the way. So it's like they haven't been opened up that much. Um, I get what she means by that. Thank you for pointing that out, because now I do recognise that, and I've been going through some of my my Xbox collection, which is just like massive, like hundreds of them. And so, oh yeah, this one's like newer. You can tell because it does when you click it open, it doesn't open all the way up. But I'm getting really sidetracked. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so that's all the games that are non-Sonic Team. I'll quickly run through the Sonic Team ones just, just to show you them. But I'm not going to talk about the games at length because, as I said earlier on, going to be doing a, a really, hopefully, like quite a long video on um, all the Sonic Team games released during the sixth generation. But give me some time because it's, it's going to be a big beast. Mm. Run out of tea now. Right, quickly rattle through these then. Absolute classic um, Sonic Mega Collection. Again, a bit like the Super Monkey Ball, released initially on the GameCube and then a deluxe version, or what's it called on that? Um, Mega Collection Plus on the Xbox and PS2 and PC. But really good. Uh, loads of, got extra Game Gear games and Master System games. Got all your Sonic games on there. If you own, if, if you like Sonic and you don't have all the games like on the Mega Drive or whatever, just pick this up for any system and, and you'll have it all there. And uh, you've got the lock on with Sonic and Knuckles and all these extra things and that. Amazing. Um, they also released a player's choice version. So obviously pick that up. Sonic Gems. I will talk a little bit about this one. So this includes three Sonic Gems, like rare games. So Sonic CD, Sonic the Fighters and Sonic R. I'm not sure if you can see that on there. Um, Sonic the Fighters is using... A very similar game engine to Virtual Fighter that's been really like kind of dragged away and it's a really strange game. Um, it kind of works, kind of doesn't. Sonic R is a real Marmite game. It's not a racing game, it's more of a platformer racer, hard to describe. Um, and Sonic CD, one of the best Sonic games, but really good. Um, this also came out on PS2, so it's, it's a bit cheaper on PS2. This is quite an expensive one on GameCube now, so um, only probably for the more hardcore. Sonic Adventure DX, so again, another Dreamcast port, and they also had the, the, the player's choice version as well, so you've got both of them there. Um, great thing about this is it comes with loads of extra Sonic games. There's 12 fantastic unlockable Game Gear slash Master System games, which it does, all, all the rare Game Gear games that lots of people wouldn't have played. Um, this is the copy I had since new, so I could have got a free Sonic ringtone, but I decided not to, to use the, um, the voucher because, you know, I was silly and I could, have had a, I, could have, I could have had a Sonic ringtone on my 3210. But anyway, um, a decent port of the Dreamcast version. Some people don't like these versions on the GameCube. I think this is okay. Um, I prefer the, 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 the KO Gardens or Chow Gardens on, on these, these um, re-released ones. But yeah, that's that, that's a decent one. Uh, it brings us swiftly on to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which for some strange reason has two players' choices. Now, 
quick information about these players' choices. When the GameCube players' choice range was first released, it had this black part on the top here. And then for whatever, for whatever reason, Nintendo didn't like that. So they very quickly switched it to this all silver box. So um, that's why there ended up being some of these games have two versions. So any GameCube fans, make sure you, you look out for that um, if you're collecting them. The Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, very similar to the Sonic Adventure 1 uh, port. It adds a few bits and pieces. I think this one doesn't have any extra stuff on it, does it? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's just like a more of a direct port. But it's got a battle mode, which is supposed to make it like two player, but it's a bit rubbish and doesn't really work. Um, again, people seem to either really like the Dreamcast ones or really like the GameCube ones. I don't mind playing these on GameCube. I think they're fine. I think they play okay. I don't see much difference to the to the game um, to the Dreamcast ones. What I would say though, with the GameCube ones, is brilliant because. A bit like you could on the VMUs of the Dreamcast, download your little KOs to your VMU to play on. On this, you can download them to your Game Boy Advance, and that's obviously got a proper colour screen and there's much more to do. So, for me, there's just a little bit more to these ones, and slightly better resolution as well. They sort of up the graphics a little bit, not, not really though. Um, we've got another one, Sonic Heroes. Some people absolutely despise this game. I think it's good. Um, and again, player's choice. I mean, it just shows how much these were selling for Sega, like Sonic, and how popular Sonic still was. That all of these games get a, uh, you know, a bestsellers player's choice range as well. So they're obviously sold well. Um, and I absolutely, I think I like this game. I've played it through loads, and it's not a real proper Sonic game, but I just think it's colourful. It's got that Sega music. The music's really good, and the sound effects. It's got a silly story that you want from a Sonic game. It's got all the characters and. It, got this little gimmick it's it's almost like a spiritual successor to knuckles chaotix anyone that's seen my recent um expensive sonic games ones uh, will tell you about the kind of the, the way the characters are bonded together and you use everyone's different moves and specialities to get through the level and that's exactly how sonic heroes work so that's that one sonic riders before we had the awesome sonic um new star racing games um we had this and it's a bit of a doozy it plays okay it's you're on these hoverboard things like you get out back to the future you've got to traverse because it's trying to be a bit like an f-zero type thing it bleh, it's okay like if you really like sonic you enjoy it because the characters are cool and it's got that sonic style and the music but it's not a very good game to be honest oh god this one <clears throat> i can't even look at it shadow the hedgehog for some reason, let's make a Sonic game where one of the Sonic characters has a gun and you've got to shoot things. <sighs> no. Uh, and then the last Sonic Team game on the GameCube isn't a Sonic Team game at all. And that is um, Billy Hatcher. And I've got one else. I've missed one off. Hold on a second, team. I've missed one. Oh, I've missed two. I've missed three. Sorry, everyone. Hold on. Not over yet. Um, Billy Hatcher, again, player's choice, it's sold very well. This is a great game. It's like a, um, a 3D action platformer type game. It's got a really cool way you control the main characters. So um, we'll go into a lot more detail on this on the Sonic Team video. But anyone that likes their 3D platformers and a bit of an adventure game like, you know, like Mario's and, and um, Crash Bandicoot and all that, check this out. It's a really good game. It's it's it's. It, it, I wouldn't say it's a hidden gem because it's, it's not like one that people haven't heard of but they probably look at it and think oh it's a bit of a weird gimmick and it, and it is a little bit but there's so much to it and so much to unlock so check that out oh we're getting there gang we're getting there oh I love this game I played this game I still play this game all the time but maybe different versions Poyo Poyo Fever Poyo Poyo Tetris Columns type game. If you if you know what it is, you'll love it. If you, if you or you might just hate it. But this one was cool because it introduced the fever mode, which like made all these dazzling things happen and every. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, do you know? What? I I really should do a video on Poyo Poyo. I really should. Um, Fantasy Star Games now now. This is something I really need to do some more research on because I think these require... Yeah, that's right. You can't really play... You can play this one, actually, through the levels, but you, can, you, you can't obviously go online now. Fantasy Star Online games. Um, 
they're okay. I just think the way the controller works on the GameCube, these become really difficult to play. And I've tried to play, because this is basically just Fantasy Star um, Online, the same as the, the Dreamcast one, but episodes one and two put together. It's okay. Like, I, I just think it just, it just works better on the Dreamcast. Like, the way the controller works, it just works a bit better. So a bit like the same with the Xbox one. I just don't think this, again, it's another port that's come over to the GameCube that just doesn't quite translate how it should. Um, it's okay though. It's very playable. It's got all the missions there. And it's got some extra content and stuff, I think. But yeah, an interesting one. I need to spend more time with these, but why would I when I just love playing them on the Dreamcast? The last one, Fantasy Star Online Episode 3. This was a bit of a, a rush jobby from Sega and Sonic Team in my eyes. Card Revolution. I don't like this game really. Um, it's a bit like a Japanese RPG more than a sort of a running around action RPG, which, Final, um, which Fantasy Star uh, Online is. And you've got this weird mechanic where, a bit like Magic the Gathering, anyone that's played that Magic the Gathering card game, which is, which is a great game on its own right, but it's to trying to do that a little bit, um, and it just, it just doesn't quite work for me. I think it's a bit too gimmicky, and it's a very slow game. I haven't played it too much, but I, I, just, I was just getting really bored. And it just, for some reason, it just didn't bring the Fantasy Star universe together for me enough. So that's all those, but we're going to do a whole video on all these Sonic Team ones. It's going to be Monster. So, that's Sega on the GameCube. Thank you for watching. I've been Retro Faith. You're all superstars. Keep it retro.